Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I've been sat here for nine minutes and 10 seconds, literally saying nothing to the camera. So um, we're off to a good start. I really don't wanna make this video. Um, I'm not very good at being vulnerable or talking about how I'm feeling when I'm feeling vulnerable, if that makes sense. That's just the same word two times over. I think sometimes when you have been feeling vulnerable but then you're like feeling a bit better and a bit mentally stronger and you come to tell people how you're feeling it's different because you've kind of got your wall back up and you know you can kind of like let people in a bit more but I think sometimes when I'm going through something I find it really really difficult to just want to let people in at all. So that is why I've been sitting here for nine minutes, so it's actually been like 10 minutes now. <laughs> Literally not saying very much. I'm gonna answer a few questions in today's video and just kind of like have a catch up. And it's funny that my most asked question more than ever, normally I get like maybe three people ask like, how are you doing? But there's a lot of like, how are you really doing? How are you doing mentally? Like more than I've ever had before. And the question box has only been up for like a couple of hours, absolute max. I posted it like the second I woke up this morning so that I had a little bit of time to prep. Yeah, it's funny that that is pretty much what the box is flooded with so far. I think maybe it's a reflection of like how we're all feeling. We all wanna know if like other people were, are you okay? Like, are you struggling? Because, because I'm struggling. I think there's a little bit of that in a lot of us. Nala is on high alert, come here. She's like sat up like, she, I think she can film anxiety. She is like, if dogs could be empaths, I think she is one. Do you feel my feelings? Because I'm convinced she understands me. Like sometimes I take the makeup phone, she looks at me and she just looks so hurt. She's side eyeing me, come on. You look so funny. Come here, come here, come here, Nala, come here. This is Nala's new best friend. I got him a few weeks back. It's meant to be for me. Uh, and she stole him and they're now best friends. Like she cuddles it when she's sleeping and I just think it's the cutest thing ever. Might just make the whole video about you. Then I don't have to talk. This is actually really therapeutic. It's like cuddling a stuffed animal is like always really therapeutic and then cuddling a dog is like, it's best of both. Hopefully now covered in dog hair. That was actually one of the questions from my question box was <laughs> how do you cope with dog hair? I'm very fortunate she only actually sheds twice a year so. Uh, not really a lot to report there. Anyway, uh, I should probably get back on the subject. So this year has definitely been like a life-changing one across the board for pretty much everyone. I don't, like if you have gone through this year and like it's remained completely unchanged, I think I'm jealous, but I'm not actually sure if I'm jealous, but like that's an achievement. Nothing in my life is the same this year as it was this time last year, really. Like actually, especially at the point when I bought this house and I moved, if you'd have flashed back 365 days, my working situation was not the same. My team was not the same. My relationship status was not the same. My home completely changed the world. <laughs> outside of my world had also completely changed like the personal changes in my life alone i think most people you know take a little bit of time to process like sometimes i marvel at my friends where they go through life and they go through these huge life changes and they just kind of are like well yeah i'm doing this now and you can see them like processing it but not really being aware that they're like processing it and going through a change but i'm a little bit more sensitive to that Maybe it's the four years of therapy, maybe it's just how my brain works, but I'm so much more sensitive to change and that's not a negative. Like I don't, I don't feel negatively about change. I really like it, but it does. I'm always very aware of how it affects my mind. So those changes alone, like all of those changes are, if you can hear like this weird annoying noise in the background, it's Nala. The second I start talking, she just like, decides to like lick all around her mouth and as someone that can't do that whole like chewing thing like I can't listen to chewing it really it's like a cheese grater those changes alone are enough for one person let alone like a pandemic and lockdowns and huge like work changes economic changes and though all of my personal changes are really really positive this isn't a video that's like oh let's all get our like tiny little violins out pieces this is me trying to explain where we are at, at the moment and as you always find talking about my life on the internet a really tricky one because unless i'm talking to someone who sees the majority of angles of my life it's always going to be tricky anyway and then explaining that times like 430 something thousand to people that have like very different outlooks on life to me very different lives in general it's it's really difficult trying to communicate that but this year has been a lot for me and throughout 
all of that change i have solidly give or take a week here and there i've had one week off that give or take a week here and there for various reasons i have consistently continue to work, continue to make videos, continue to sit and put a smile on my face, or well, not sit, walk around my house and put a smile on my face. And it's not me acting, but there are definitely days where it really takes its toll. And I think vlogging, especially like actual vlogging, like my life, rather than just like making sit down videos, so different. It's a real bittersweet, bittersweet, is that the word? Like it's a really interesting, position to be in because on one side of things you're like trying to make your everyday life interesting and beautiful and that is so lovely because it really teaches you to focus on like positive things and it kind of really trains your mind into like making like really boring everyday things really beautiful like making your morning coffee I could make a much more beautiful montage to be fair and make it really pretty but who has the time i don't but vlogging those things really helps like both myself and i guess other people to like appreciate even like the little things like making your morning coffee and like the joy of that but on the flip side when you are struggling or just like you're having like a, a week that is a bit uneventful there is this pressure to make everything lovely and as much as some people really encourage the like raw side of youtube and the say how you really feel side of youtube what i've learned really from youtube as a whole across the past almost decade and i'm going to be bleating this on until next summer and then it will be decade is that people want what they think the raw situation is but they don't necessarily want every single up and down and choosing when to be open about the ups and downs that's a difficult field to navigate so the majority of the time you just err on the side of caution and kind of steer clear of being very very open about things that are going on unless it's a huge life change and then it feels very solid and very safe and you know something you can't get around but it's in that in between where it's not one or the other like a great life event or a really bad life event that the struggle is where you're not feeling like great and you're not super busy and there's not a real something else to focus on like i might not be feeling great but there might be a really beautiful change to the house or my hair or something like that and it takes away from me personally in the vlogs and i guess that's something that you can see across youtube is you can see when someone is actually letting you in and really i don't choose to do that a lot so it's those lulls in between where people would really like to see a vlog but i don't have anything in me to give and my life doesn't have anything in it to give either and that's where i find things can become quite exhausting i know there are some people that would happily watch me like chew paper i don't know why did i pick that as an example <laughs> i know there are some of you that would watch anything but i know as a whole that that is not the majority and that's all fine i've come to accept that this is the lay of youtube and i love my job i love my job on youtube and this is not a like complaint about my job in any way but it's that pressure that both comes from youtube but also from myself because i am a perfectionist and a people pleaser and i'm so very aware of it but over the course of six months and going through lots of different life changes i'm not even going to call them stressors even though you could call them stressors having that pressure and then going through life changes is it takes its toll mentally and as much as I know there will be people that don't care or can't relate and they're just like honey get on with it like that is what i am like to myself and that is what i have been like with myself for a very 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 long time i really do just like chin up and get on with things more than a lot of people i know like i said i've had a week's holiday during a pandemic <laughs> during moving house like i have not had time off time off for me is unstructured 
essentially unstructured working, so working when I want to work. And it's brought me to a point where I need to take a little bit of the pressure off and most of that pressure comes from me. Some of the pressure then also comes from some people on the internet that then just have no emotional capacity, no emotional empathetic capacity whatsoever. And I do like take stuff like that to heart because it's like matching up with this little voice in the back of my head that says you're not enough. So with that in mind, I'm very aware at the moment that I need to take care of myself. And I have put so much pressure on myself. Like September, you will probably have noticed that there weren't any vlogs, minimal Instagram appearances. <laughs> like I was logging in but not really like doing much and honestly my screen time has come down so much because I've been working solidly from nine to five on all of my different projects and all of my videos and we're very ahead at the moment and I don't know if that is something that will have come across by the time this goes live but I was working so hard prepping for October I still really wanted to do vlogtober even though and again, I've addressed the channel change already, but that hasn't gone live yet or the name change. So I'm still getting questions on Instagram daily that's like, why has this changed? And with that, I know there were so many people that were panicking about there not being like a Vlogtober. And there's been a lot of change this year for everyone. And I knew that I wanted to make this change, but I also felt bad. I felt bad on behalf of the people that don't like change. Which is, this is so silly because this is the level of like overthinking that my little anxiety brain goes into of well other people have been through so much change already this year and I don't want to add another change however small to their like palette and then if I don't do Vlogtober like that's another change and all of these people are just going to be sad that everything is changing and I can't do that to myself and I need to take that pressure away because it just got to the point where I couldn't, I just wasn't able to do like daily tasks in my life because it was building on me so much and I was becoming so sad because of pressure that I was, only I was putting on myself in anticipation of other people's feelings that may or may not ever happen. They may happen, but if they do, that's not, it's just, it's not something that I can hold myself responsible for. That's a lot of responsibility to put on myself is like the feelings of, you know, like hundreds of thousands of people. So with that in mind, we're gonna see how this month goes. I might upload more, I might not. There's not gonna be any less, but I don't know in terms of like, I've already started pre-filming more sit down stuff, but in terms of the vlogs, I'm just not sure how much there is going to be. I think it's basically, I either commit and you will be able to tell how anxious I am and how not in a good headspace I am because we can all tell like I watch other people's vlogs and there are some people that are like super anxious and it's almost like they're trying to convince themselves that they're not super anxious and you know you're watching these YouTube videos and I'm just like this is making me anxious and I never want to even if you guys don't realize that that's what you're feeling in watching me I don't want to put that on you like I, th I feel like this video is probably bad enough to be honest and that is why I really rein it in in terms of being honest about feelings I'm so aware that what we consume affects us I hold myself very responsible for that again just giving myself a lot of responsibility but with that in mind we are going to see how this month goes in terms of the vlogs i will try and upload more but i don't know what those videos are going to be and i already feel so guilty even for the past month in september there will have been one one vlog and i'm already getting like where are the vlogs where but where are they but where are the vlogs i feel so guilty but that's it's not the only thing i do on youtube and actually i enjoy the fashion side of what i do so much so so much and it's been bringing me a lot of joy over september and that's not the only thing you're going to see and you're not gonna not get any vlogs. I know there'll be a lot of people going into panic mode, but this isn't me saying I'm not doing them. It's just, let's lower the expectations. Let's lower our expectations on what we expect from Suze. It's been a year and, oh, this is where I was going. I'm, I went off in a tangent. I either do vlogging month and have a breakdown about five days in, because normally my breakdown comes about halfway through. You know, day 12 of Vlogtober is normally where I just feel like I can't do it. And one of the reasons I love Vlogmas so much on that is because it's less days in a month to vlog. And honestly, I feel like by the end of October, we're all so bored of me anyway. I'm bored of me. But if I push myself to do this, I know that I, there's a good chance I'm not even making it past like day five. And I know from experience now what happens when I put too much pressure on myself and I fully 
melt down and I think that would that would be it for me for the rest of the month and I really want to do vlogmas this year I love the festiveness I really want to do it this year if I can if like I'm allowed to leave my house this is the thing at this point in time I actually don't know what October is going to look like for us in the UK I also have to be conscious of that and keep things very flexible because of that but if October were to become too much for me if I found that it wasn't actually like sustainable for me in the position that I'm in this year I don't know I honestly don't know if vlogmas would be on the cards so this is my month to practice making vlogging in this current climate and in the mental space that I am in a sustainable piece of content and hopefully in taking the pressure off myself things go well and I'm able to produce for vlogmas as well. At the end of the day I would rather be consistent and produce videos for you consistently and regularly than go hard for vlogtober for like a week and then realise that I can't do it and then actually need to really step back and then we actually don't have minimum two videos a week going up. I've been really proud of how consistent my channel has been this year throughout everything. Consistency was one of the key words that I noted down in my New Year's resolutions at the beginning of the year. I only really do like words instead of like actual things for my goals so that I actually have something to aim towards that you know doesn't have like a dead success line. I just feel like it works really really well for me and it has done like I'm so proud of how consistent I've been on this channel this year despite a worldwide pandemic and I want to maintain that so we're gonna see how we go this month it's gonna be an interesting month for sure so with that in mind with that long chat it's probably like half the video this video is probably gonna be like nearing an hour long with that in mind what have I been up to apart from filming copious amounts of videos during September well you will have seen some of my home updates if you haven't I will pop it I feel like it's that way maybe it's that way in the corner i will pop a link to my last vlog which was like my home updates and wardrobe updates for autumn though i do have another wardrobe little update for you on sunday i mentioned a little haul in that vlog and that is going to be going up i think i think sunday bear with me over the next few days because obviously it's my birthday weekend this weekend so i'm gonna be a bit here and there the majority of you are gonna love Sunday's video. So as I mentioned in that video, I'm having like my shutters done for this room, which I'm so excited about. I've always said when I owned a home that I wanted to have shutters and this property kind of works really, really nicely with them. Those I think will go up in December. So very excited. There's gonna be like home content, a lot of home content for you, I think in December. I'm so excited for that. Basically the next two months are me kind of prepping for like the stuff that's gonna happen through November and into December. And that is gonna take up a lot of my time, I think really like I'm gonna have to kind of mentally give myself to the wardrobe room and the office and I'm so excited. I already need to tonight plan, I'm having the front of my house done, which is not gonna be so fun for you guys because I'm not gonna show you, but just in terms of like some little tweaks that are essential for me but orchestrating like all of the booking in of like the home changes has been on my agenda this month and it's been so great i feel so excited to finally have like the last two rooms that need like the things that need to be done finished off and then i'm just at this like fun point with the house where it's just fun ish there's one there's one thing that i actually just like looked at and i'm like that needs doing but we're at a really fun point after that where it's not like this needs to be done for practical reasons this is just fun reasons and i love that so that's been really fun what hasn't been fun is me trying to figure out what is wrong with my body lots of people know from vlogmas last year that i had to go and have like scans and tests oh and vlogtober is it vlogtober vlogtober last year was it the first of october god i can't i think it might have been the first of october where i'd have blood tests i literally have just had another one the other day almost passed out it was a horrible day <laughs> such a horrible day yeah so that has been really high up on my list of priorities for this month and honestly it got nowhere my result my test results came back for pcos which i honestly was like every single symptom like ticking no so 
we are down to like three things one of them is an easy change and the other two are not oh i had an allergy test come back basically these were this was me ticking off like trying to figure out what is wrong with my body the way my body as a woman works which is just it doesn't and what is wrong with my skin i've been trying to like i thought they were linked and i still think they're linked so over the past like year now i've had two blood tests for like different things and multiple different things within those two bloods a scan blood test the other day and i finally did an allergy test so distracting i had an allergy test which was really interesting the results that came back were like the main thing was like a, an intolerance to the thing in the red was an intolerance to yeast I thought was so interesting but that's really really helpful to me I think even if it's not affecting my skin I definitely think it's good to know and there are some there were some borderlines that actually there's a, certain combinations that I'm like oh actually I've always felt really not great after I've eaten that and this together so it kind of explains a little bit of what's going on I think a little bit but I'm still kind of like the jury's still out on my skin and my womb so that's going to be ongoing and to be honest it is a real like stress for me and it has been for the past two years now so that's going to be interesting but that has really contributed to a lot of my stress throughout September but yeah good to know that I don't have PCOS like it's just good to have another thing ticked off so that I can narrow it down the only thing left now is to come off the pill which is fine and apart from that the only things I've got left are stress and what was the other thing like basic lifestyle changes stress and basic lifestyle changes so yeah not ideal if it's not my pill we're gonna see but yeah that is where we are at feels very freeing i like doing these videos at the start of october i actually just had one of those comments that was like oh please don't do that again and i'm just like do you know what it's actually really important for me to sit down and let you know where i'm at you know a month where i might be vlogging more so that you understand like where my life is at because if i didn't do this then you'd just be getting this information in dribs and drabs throughout a month and it's actually like I don't know it's kind of weird it makes me feel more comfortable going into things if everyone knows where i'm at so that is why i do them and if anyone feels negative about that then clearly don't care about my emotional well-being but yeah i like to think that we are all empathetic and you know emotionally intelligent enough here to understand why i need to do this so i thought i'd answer a few questions from my instagram before i go and get my hair chopped off i know you're probably thinking how much more can you have chopped off but just in case the uk gets put into another lockdown i want to make sure that like the ends are like super fresh and healthy just in case i can't get my hair cut for a little while so that is what i'm going to be doing today and i had highlights put on my hair that i really didn't actually want in august and they've kind of like i just didn't really want bleach on my hair at all so my hair is like in need of being like cut regularly especially at the front on those bits that were like bleached to keep it really really healthy because it just didn't need any more bleach on it and i'm just really scared they're gonna like start breaking off so another chop is on the cards today first question is why did you change your name on socials if you haven't watched my other video i feel like people really want a deep like meaning or like some real like career strategy and it's literally just because i wanted to and that is it there's a lot of how are you feeling mentally thanks guys for your love and concern it's quite a few designer bag questions first one is looking to start a designer bag collection where would you start i've actually done a video recently on my top five luxury starter purchases so i will link that i also go over my previous video that i did when i was like 25 that was so long ago that didn't actually <laughs> my vocals don't work anymore i filmed that so long ago so i react to that critique it and then kind of like give my updated opinion it's a really fun video to film i love that do you think you would ever buy a house which needs a full renovation i wouldn't say no to this but i know so many people that have done a full renovation because obviously it makes the most sense in terms of like buying you buy somewhere that doesn't cost as much as like a fully renovated place and then you make changes exact to something exactly how you want it and i really respect that don't know i, I think i'd need to have the right contacts in place before I do it in order to be able to do it to the level of organization that I would like. People that know me really well will know that with my house, I am like very, very on it. And I like for the people that I use to be really good. I'm really happy with the people that I have used so far, but I don't have, and I'm very fortunate as well, that I have a lot of family that work in different kind of like trades, but 
there's certain people that I just don't know, like I don't, certain contacts I don't have yet. But I'm hoping by the time I have kind of finished up here, I will know a few more people and it's definitely an option, but I, what I would hate to do is start renovating somewhere and not be happy with the tradesperson that I have decided to use and then it'd be really stressful. I don't need that in my life. Like no one needs that stress in their life. So yeah, I wouldn't say never, but I think there's a happy medium for me in terms of finding a property that maybe has a lot of bits that I like, but then some bits that I don't like. Basically, I just look for areas that would like need updating and I know those things add value to a property. I didn't do that with this place necessarily because, and I'm so grateful I didn't because I moved during lockdown. So the place that I had put an offering on previously needed so like needed just like completely gutting, completely gutting. It had like this wallpaper that would have been a real nightmare to get off, like would have taken like a long time to get off. Even like my family were like, this is on the wall, really on the wall. And I'm so grateful that that sale just like didn't really work out. And actually there was property after that. And I'm grateful that didn't work out as well because it needed so much work doing to it. Whereas this house had kind of had like the base of it done. So it had like, it had electric heating before. So it had the heating installed, like basically the really boring jobs. There's still a few boring jobs to be fair, but I got to do a lot of the fun bits and there's still like a few areas where I can add value that they kind of left for me. And I really liked that about this property and I don't know if that's for everyone. I think people kind of like to either renovate or buy somewhere that's fully done and don't tend to go for the in-between, but I wanted an in-between property. And that's what I feel like this kind of was. I just don't really know what I would want. So I don't really know if it's something that needs renovating, if that makes sense. I'm excited for my next one, but I'm not ready to let this one go, so. Would you ever sell your Sway Balenciaga bag? I get asked about that all the time. I'm not selling it. I'm so sorry. I love that bag. Black suede, gold hardware. Definitely haven't seen it recently. And it's just such a classic. How's everything going? How's Ryan, dogs, home, life, work, life? Well, we've kind of covered the majority of those. Ryan is good. I feel like I should probably address him at some point in this video because I feel like otherwise... If I say I'm not doing well mentally and I haven't mentioned him, I feel like people are gonna be like, they've broken up. But no, he's good. I don't really know what else to say. Apart from that. What plans do you have for your birthday? P.S. Love your new hairstyle. Thank you. For my birthday, I am going out for dinner with my friends, hopefully. If no rules change, I'm going out for dinner with my friends. Hope the weather's good because Rob's gonna be sitting outside. But yeah, other than that, I'm not really sure. I think I might go for a roast on the Sunday. And other than that, I really don't know. I have just realized though, after like today, I can actually open my birthday present to myself. I don't know whether to leave it till my birthday or not, but now that I've got like the first like Vlogtober, vid in process i think i think i can actually like get away with like filming with it without being on camera but yeah literally just like have a nice day open up my new bag i'm gonna wear all of my dresses from my birthday dress trial video because i feel like i'm actually doing so little and probably just staying home so i can just like wear all of the dresses from my video because I will be inside. How great is that? Do you want more tattoos? Any ideas of what you'll get next? I get asked this so much, I guess because I haven't had one in so long, but when I'm like busier, I obviously just don't get tattooed because I don't have the time. But obviously this year that has been a no-go. I'm not really like in that headspace at the moment and it's not really been my priority to spend money on in terms of like, I would rather kind of like invest in my wardrobe because obviously that comes like 360 with work that's why it's an investment you know it's not an investment the most but it works like that for me i'd rather invest in my wardrobe and my home and yeah it just hasn't been a priority no one's been able to like get booked in and things like that so yeah it's just not really on the cards at the moment so i haven't even thought about anything that i would want because as soon as i would want something i would i'm very kind of like i want it now very broker salt esque you know i don't really think about something until i'm like in a position where i can facilitate that, you know? Books and Netflix recommendations, please. I just finished reading Someone We Know and I really enjoyed that. And I read Silent Patient before that. Basically, I just love like the kind of like mystery thriller type stuff. It's like, they live in a suburban neighborhood and someone has died, who did it? I always feel really embarrassed talking about books because I feel like I don't read, you know, like 
real works of literature, you know? There's literally no Jane Austen or anything like that going on in my life. I just love thriller books. I find them such like an easy read. It's, I think because they're the kind of books that I used to read when I was like on holiday. And then I was like, why am I just reading these when I'm on holiday? Like I love these and they really take me away from like whatever else is going on. So I'm just gonna read these all the time. And Netflix recommendations. I'm currently watching Ratchet. I love I love, Lauren recommended it to me. She knew I'd love it because it has um, Sarah Paulson in it. I, I love it. I knew as soon as I started watching it that Ryan Murphy made it and I love everything that he does. Such a fangirl, such a fangirl. Yeah, so that I really enjoyed. I started watching, Hol Ooh, my eyelashes are sticking together. I started watching Hollywood and really enjoyed that. I watched The Fool and really enjoyed season one, but season two was kind of like, okay until about halfway through and then I was like, eh. and then season, three i was just so bored and um, me and ryan really like persevered with it just to get to the end because we committed so much time already yeah just so disappointed by the end to be honest but season one is great just watch season one it's great viewing and then just pretend that it stops kind of there are you still loving your hair i'm thinking about cutting mine but will i regret it it depends i don't regret cutting mine because mine looked awful before from where it was so broken and it just really i was trying to get it to a length so that i could lob it and then have just like a fresh head of hair i'm still like i plan on keeping it for as long as i have like blonde on the ends because i want it to just all be like my natural color and take advantage of that whilst i don't have like a full head of like grace because i found my first i found my first and i blame lockdown i blame the stress of this year i actually didn't know what age that was going to happen to me because my mum has been dying her hair for years and years and years so she actually saw her first when she was like in her 30s but she was like i could have had them for so long before that but yeah my aim is to get it to be like as natural as possible and to be like really easily maintainable so that if i have to go for like six months ever again without like seeing a hairdresser that it's at a point where it's nice and easy it takes a little bit more effort but in terms of it being like super easy to maintain like during a lockdown i love that and just in terms of like the overall health of my hair i don't regret cutting it at all i think if you already have super long really healthy hair and you're not like sure on short hair you know, I, I can't guarantee that you're not gonna regret it. But for me, my hair was in such a state from when I'd gone from like bleach to dark, back to bleach, like that hair had just had it. So yeah, it's always gonna be an improvement for me and I'm so much happier with it than I was with my hair before without the extensions. Plans for the rest of the year. I really don't have any at the moment. I have kind of got to a point where I try not to plan things in too much because I don't like to set myself up to be disappointed so really i just am kind of working towards like my work kind of goals and things that are coming up really just taking it like day by day week by week and not really making like real long-term plans so yeah we're just seeing how we go luckily i've got like the house and it keeps me really focused and you know each kind of like month brings like different things for me to do around the house and like the garden and i'm trying to grow vegetables <laughs> at the moment i've got lettuce which I feel very proud of, but that's about it. Like nothing else has really given me anything. Yeah, but I feel very, very lucky to have had the house because it's been keeping me really focused, both like in terms of like my creativity. Sometimes it's difficult because then I'm like torn between like my creative like fashion videos and my creativity is actually being drained by the house so i have to really split it but in terms of like financially it makes me keep really on top of like my financial goals because like i need to stick to like a budget and really really focus on that in order to be able to do the fun things that i want to do so yeah it's just been really great for me but other than that i really don't have any plans i guess it's just like people's like friends birthdays and trying to make those like the best we can luckily my friendship group has like very spaced out birthdays so that's been great what is your favorite perfume now my favorite perfume is actually always all saints sunset riot it is the most unique gorgeous smelling perfume i also really love floral flora mortis and leather skies from all saints they're like the best and in addition to that i love Byrodo fragrances so blanche is one of my favorites it's basically like a clean linen cotton smelling vibe and i love that i also really like gypsy water it's really floral but really unique and really fresh and it's so beautiful i also really wish this would come out in a perfume because this white company fragrance is like smoky vanilla they actually it smells a lot like diptyque vanilla which actually means i should dig out diptyque oh dwell because that is also a gorgeous fragrance and i do love that one as well so those are my top kind of like 
fragrances. I tend to stick with those three brands, four brands, I would say. All Saints are my number one, Bairado, Diptyque, and Tom Ford. Tom Ford are one of my absolute faves. Someone's asked me, where have you been? I hope this video has actually answered your questions. I've been very absent from the internet, but like still just like working so much. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it there. I need to go and get my hair cut now. So yeah, I will be back with you in a little bit, hopefully looking slightly more preventable and I'll have a nice little blow dry bob because my hairdresser does the best little bobs. Yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Back from the hairdressers, we have a fresh cut. It looks so neat. The last time I had it cut, we actually like left a couple of layers like a little bit longer. So it actually wasn't all one length, but this time we have evened it up because it grew so much grew so nicely it's looking really good really clean very happy with it i've just changed into some tracky bottoms because i'm about to upload tonight's video i've also booked in for a birthday blow dry because i thought i would treat myself so yeah i'll have a nice swishy hair on my birthday hello we are chilling on the sofa she's so cute all i've wanted to do all day is just lie on the sofa with her and like curl up and cuddle but sadly, I had to work. I've just uploaded tonight's video. It's just gone live, which hopefully lots of you will have enjoyed because I know lots of you have been missing the vlogs. I also uploaded a video on Instagram on like, it's basically me pretending to be a Zara model for 15 seconds. And uh, you should go and watch it, I'll link it. But the response to that has just been so nice. I had quite a few messages. My phone is just constantly buzzing now. I had quite a few messages today, like unsolicited nasty messages you know, and it really got me down for like the bulk of my day. But you know, when you're just not in the mental space to really like be letting people in and literally like the first time I have really in like weeks, I think there's a real correlation between when stuff happens in the world and people are feeling like angry or upset and the influx of negativity that comes the way of anyone who has like a door that can be opened and a foot can come in like you just like the flood just comes in so i was feeling really sad for a lot of the, the day and it really like affects me like when i was getting my hair done i just didn't want to speak i just wanted to be like really quiet because it kind of makes me invert a little bit like invert i'm like a clam and i just want to go back into my shell and yeah i felt quite sad everyone's been so so lovely <laughs> <laughs> so nice about the Zara video and it just like reminds me that sometimes you know your people aren't like the loudest people on a platform but like they're there and the response is just like made me really happy because I'm like oh you are all my people like my kind of people you know and I think Instagram is like where the bulk of the issues are really now because I love the community that we have on here I love it so much you guys are amazing and i very rarely get the fear with a video anymore because i feel like you guys know me you know my intentions when i say something and i like to think that as much as i try and be clear and communicative you give me a little bit of space to like speak without fearing that i'll mess up i feel comfortable that you guys know that my intentions are good and i don't feel like anyone here ever jumps to bad conclusions in the way that lots of people do on instagram and i have to remind myself of that when i just feel like i don't have anything left to give is that like i love my instagram people but like oh, this over this part of the internet i really like enjoy it like i love when i put a video live that like i don't have to be reminded you know in the same way that i do on instagram i don't have to be reminded that people enjoy my content because on youtube i just know like I just feel like there's good vibes over here all the time and I really I want you to know that I really appreciate that because that can't be said for all the platforms but yeah that's pretty much why I've been like dead on Instagram this month just because there's it's such a big platform and there's lots of di very very different people on it whereas I feel like YouTube has surpassed its peak and now we just have like a really wonderful community here and I love that and I need to remember that when I'm feeling a bit like crap don't know that's just my thoughts i might be airing my thoughts a lot more so i'm gonna keep it chill this evening i'll probably be back with you tomorrow i'm going to the garden center because i want to finalize my things at the front of the house it's gonna be very dull really nothing super exciting is happening out there just like some practical changes so garden center i love a trip to the garden center so much and then i am starting to sort out wardrobe room which mm. It's, it's a state. I don't feel like you guys have seen it in a long time, if ever. And uh, yeah, it's not looking pretty. So 
that's what we're tackling tomorrow. But I'm gonna make some Mexican, log off for a bit, and I'll see you guys then. See you tomorrow. Good morning world! <laughs> Good morning world! <laughs> that was my intro. Good morning. We're on a walk. So I check in, commit to the vlog today <laughs> because I haven't done that all weekend. Hi! Very random intro to today. I know. I went on a really nice walk this morning though, as you will have seen. Today it is Monday. Getting back into the swing of things after the weekend, which was really, really nice and chilled. I've just finished up a what I wore in a week video, so I will link that if you haven't already seen it and today's outfit is in that video. So if you want to go and see my outfits for the past week plus, it was a long time in filming. I found it very, very difficult, but that is already on my channel for you to go and watch. That was the last video that went up. I'm about to make myself a smoothie. But before I do, I thought I would show you a few new things. So, Friday I didn't vlog because me and Lauren had a mammoth task of sorting out my wardrobe room. Both my office and wardrobe room have been looking in absolute state. They still need the, like I said, I've said earlier in this video, they still need a lot done to them and Friday was step one in getting the whole thing sorted and the aim was to just make my wardrobe room a functional room that we can actually like access, walk into more than the two steps. I've just taken because that was the most you could get into this room it was filled with boxes and the rail was kind of like in the middle of the room and the boxes were surrounding it just from where the movers had just like put everything in here and I'd just been like dump everything that came from this room at my old place to this room in the new place and then I just basically left it but also it just got more and more out of control as time went on this is what it is looking like now it's very dark in here it will probably come off a lot brighter on camera but it is very very gloomy in here because of this color it doesn't bounce light around so the most light we've got bouncing around as you can probably see is like the ceiling area but eventually this is going to be white the flooring will also be done this is the carpet that was originally running through the whole house like the whole house was this color and this color it made everything very very gloomy as you can probably tell so as much as it is a kind of nice color to go in with all of my clothing it's not the worst color obviously it's actually a very nice color as to what some people end up with when they like buy a property and need to like do bits to it. I just need it to be a bit more of a blank canvas. And some of you might recognize this unit from my old flat. So this was actually the bookcase storage. These are the Billy bookcases from Ikea, which used to house all of my shoes and all of my bags, but we've actually changed up the system. So now bags are just kind of like discreet and tucked away. And then the rest of my like jeans, sweaters, t-shirts, that kind of thing, are on the bookcase because as some of you will know I don't have any built-in wardrobes in this property there are there's literally nothing there is one cupboard built into this property and it is literally about 10 centimeters deep it's so small so I'm going to have wardrobes built into just this wall I was originally going to do an L shape along here but thinking long term it's not practical and it's not going to work so I think what is going to be done is just like this whole wall as much as I can and then hopefully I can have a mixture of shoes all of my like sweatshirts, bags. Hopefully I'll be able to build rail storage into it as well. I think if we go up higher and have more strategically placed shelves, because obviously this has basically just been like this from where I had a set out shop kind of layout. The only time I've changed it is because I really, really wanted my boots to <laughs> fit into this storage. But obviously we could add more shelves and things like that. But if I plan it out well and really think it through, I think I can design a wardrobe that will fit a lot of stuff in it. This is doing well, but I think there's definitely room for improvement. So this will probably not stay like this and I will have something else designed, but it's all working quite well for now. So we have a mixture of bits that need to go on Depop for this rail because that is happening again. Depop is coming guys, Depop is coming. So there's a mixture of my clothes down the end, Depop further up this end of the rail and then all of my folded items and shoes and boots. It's just nice to see them all again. 
as much as I'm not getting the most juice out of them I'm really glad that I didn't invest a ton of money into like boots and heels like really snazzy ones and I've kind of just bought from high street because it's making me feel a lot less guilty about not wearing them and all of my boots my flat boots that I love which are also down here as well are still getting a lot of wear so that makes me really happy like I think I'll get wear out of all of these boots over the winter because none of them have like an incredibly high heel and they work really well in my wardrobe so yeah then over here we have a mirror we have more bits that just need to be tucked away we have my shelving unit that came from the bedroom so the bedroom is now super clean and tidy as you can see it's some real makeshift storage going on in here which is fine but i think long term i'll probably have like a chest of drawer kind of dresser situation going on over here maybe some shelving just to really make use of all of the space in here yeah that is what we worked on the whole of friday it was a real job but even though this is kind of chaotic, I kind of like the way it looks. I've never really had like an open wardrobe kind of situation before. So I'm kind of enjoying just making it look slightly presentable and enjoying the look of something open in here for now because I definitely won't go for an open wardrobe once I have wardrobes built in. It will be all shut away and neat with like doors and stuff. And I'm actually really happy that we moved the shelving out of this room. It was tucked around the corner because now this room looks so much brighter. And I'm really loving it. I wish I could say the same for my office though because it now looks a state because I moved all of my makeup and all of my like admin bits into the office and it doesn't look good but that is a job for next month. I also thought I would show you a few new garden bits. So Friday morning I also went to the garden centre. I was about to say the greenhouse and the garden centre and I picked up this mixture of plants down here so we have some lavender some olive trees and then some plants which I do not know what they were called those are for when the front of the house situation kind of starts and then I also I'm really excited about this I have also planted some rhubarb I actually have two little patches of rhubarb in my garden now really excited to hopefully make crumbles for all of my friends at some point in oh it'll be next year I guess so that is what's going on down here then I have also Got a couple of olive trees in here now which is great i'm basically gonna start here and then build out and up and along because this is such a long stretch of flower bed it's going to take me forever to fill but i'm excited to kind of make it all a little bit you know me i mowed my grass by the way i'm so proud of myself i'm really getting the hang of it now it was really difficult to begin with then we also have another little patch of rhubarb and i also have a curry plant which i am loving it smells so great and then finally the thing that i am most excited about <laughs> i'm so excited to show you this it finally happened i have tomatoes it's taken so long and people said it wouldn't happen but it has i'm so happy i also have some lettuce growing which is like thriving so happy it all started out kind of like this this patch is not thriving so much it's doing okay but it definitely like this is kind of how this looked when i first bought it and this is actually doing a lot better now to be honest i made sure that i brought the mud up like higher and made it all firm and they seem to be much happier but these end ones are so happy which is great because lettuce and tomatoes are basically like my staple foods <laughs> so happy and there are so many flowers on that tomato plant now at first i just thought there were a couple there's so many i could cry i love tomatoes it's gonna be like red and orange ones as well which is just the dream because red and orange tomatoes together, like you pay a lot for that at the supermarket, so I'm just jazzed. just made myself a smoothie this one has banana almond milk frozen cherries spinach pumpkin seeds protein powder half a pack of porridge oh and a scoop of peanut butter a big scoop of peanut butter that is that is it um i actually really want to try this but with like a chocolate protein powder because i think it would just make it taste like chocolate cherry flavored and it would be so good so in this box is my birthday present to myself by the way yes i know my nails are crazy long i am gonna do an at home gel mani for my birthday so i've been growing them out but anyway in this box is my birthday present to myself which i'm gonna be opening today 
because I feel sad. But if you guys want to know what is in it, you're probably going to have to head over to my Instagram and it'll probably be on there tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to say tomorrow. Okay, everybody. So I think you can officially consider yourself caught up on my life so far. But I do have a video coming on Sunday and then I think the video after that that i see you in will be from my birthday and we will see how we go with vlogs from there we'll see but please do remember that i am human <laughs> throughout this month and yeah in the uk especially i'm not sure what it's like for you guys in other countries but it's an absolute state over here and we might get locked down again and i just don't really know what's gonna happen so emotionally but also physically i might not be able to do so much so we're gonna see how we go i think that's gonna be it from me i hope you guys have enjoyed this little catch up as much as you can and i will see you all again hopefully very very soon